The GPS modules are now really cheap and tiny devices. This will give my IoT and robotics projects data on position and speed. So can I read these from a Raspberry Pi Pico? Let me tell you all about it. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. The device I've chosen is the ATGM 336H5N, a single chip module with a UART interface, so nice and compatible with our Pico. I do wish I'd ordered a PCB from our sponsor, PCBWay, to make this demo a little bit more stable though. In this video, I just want to show you how to interface and process the data from these modules to give you location. To demonstrate it though, I needed to be able to get this working away from home. So I've gone the extra step of interface this to the Wayshare RP2040 Touch 1.28 inch screen. I've shared the code for this, but I'm not going to talk through that in this video. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video or the payment link in the description. I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there and I hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. So let's have a chat about these ATGM 336H5Ns, which are, are the uh, GPS modules that I'm using. And I got a couple of these uh, delivered to me from China. They're very, very cheap and they're tiny little devices. Of course, I was a bit of an idiot and I didn't realize I needed to order the ones that actually have the antennas come with them. So I got two units and no antennas. So you do have to buy the antennas as well. Uh, the antennas are quite big, or the ones I got are actually quite big to go with these units, much, much bigger than the actual uh, board themselves. So just be aware of that. Um, these devices themselves um, support the BDS and GNSS constellations for positional navigation. So they get lots of satellites and get all of the data from them. They're, you know, about a centimeter square in size. Um, and it's really just a single chip module there that's um, available for us. You can track up to 32 satellites, which should give you a pretty good location. They're quite quick at uh, logging on. Um, well, GPS is never perfectly quick, but it's not reasonably quick at logging on. Um, lower power and low cost. So ideal for the sort of projects that I want to play with. The devices themselves are 3.3 volts um, power and uh, they are actually UART devices so that they just basically spool out all of the data about what's going on straight over a serial interface at 9600 board. And so that's nice and easy for us to read from a Pico and do something clever with. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Using the GPS module on a breadboard for this video was challenging. What I should have done is had PCBWay fabricate me a PCB for the demonstration removing my unstable connection challenges. PCBWay could have also 3D printed a case for the project to make it truly stable for trips out. I might even have found the perfect PCB and case on PCBWay's community project site. So do check out PCBWay products and services today. Hi, so I'm outside the British Engineerium in Brighton and Hove, which I thought was a great place to demonstrate this and see if we can uh, get um, my GPS to work. So let's have a look at the GPS. So here we go, the device, and it's quite difficult getting in focus. Let me just freeze frame it so that we've got the actual position. So there we are, 50.84 by uh, minus 0 0.17, which is pretty much what Google says my position should have been too. So um, the device certainly works and I can live read my location and display it on my little um, Waveshare RP2040 touch display. As always, I'm gonna share all my code um, of my experiments online on GitHub so you can go and grab the repo there and see everything that I've done. And what I really wanna do is just do a basic read from this device to actually find out my location. And I'm going to, as you've seen, share that on a Waveshare RP2040 touch screen. And the reason I wanted to do that is just so I could take the device somewhere else and show you uh, the location. That avoids me actually giving you the pinpoint location of exactly where I live and work. So uh, that, that's why I'm, I've done it that way. Now, 
I didn't just jump straight into writing the code for that device. Um, actually working on those um, RP2040 WaveShare um, touch devices and debugging the code is really quite hard um, because you, you've got no access to a debugger. There's no um, uh, uh, capability to do that. You've got limited access to serial ports, a limited number of ports available to you. Um, so it's, it's quite um, restrictive and that can cause problems. So I went through a whole set of uh, little demos to make sure that I could do things, starting by just echoing the data coming off of these devices and seeing what it looks like, uh, and then decoding or the format that it's producing, um, moving that to using an interrupt, which was kind of important for me because um, I thought I was going to use interrupts in order to actually do this uh, decoding in the background, Though in actual fact for the WaveShare device, the, what I ended up doing was actually doing the decoding on the second core. But um, anyway, then finally I got on to doing this on the RP2040 Touch itself. Now the demo I'm gonna talk through and go through the code on is I'm just gonna go through that for the Entrup decoding version. Um, mainly because, um, well, why is that? that? That avoids me going through uh, some of the details around these uh, touch screens and how they work and LVGL graphics and things, which uh, are all really nice and all really important and all really exciting, but not really what this video is about. We're gonna have UART1 on our Pico connected to the GPS device and UART0, I'm gonna use as standard IO so that we can get all the data of what's going on. And uh, they're gonna use uh, pins 16 and 17, which is what I tend to use for UART0 and your one's gonna be on ports uh, four and five. So let's have a look at what the data coming out of this is. And as you can see, um, you know, even when you turn these things first on, and it's certainly not got a location because it's deep inside my room, um, it's uh, uh, just spilling out lots of data about the device itself, what it can see, uh, the state of uh, um, and activity, et cetera. And so this data is called uh, a format called NMEA0183. I presume it's called something like NEMA or something like that. I would guess it's pronounced. And this is a combined electrical and data specification for the communication of marine electronics. And having looked at the format of it, it is absolutely horrid, isn't it? Um, and horrid to uh, start looking at how we're going to decode it. Fortunately, um, someone else has already written a wonderful parser that's nice and lightweight that we can use. So uh, Cosma Mozek from uh, Poland has written this uh, little library here called Mini M uh, or M I N M E I, and that's the library I'm going to use, and it works perfectly for for this sort of code and decoding. So let's have a look at the code. So over in the repo, I've got uh, an experiments folder here and I've got a number of experiments. The one I'm gonna talk about is the decoding with interrupts and that's the one where I've really built all of this code into a sort of uh, a class and encapsulated it to actually talk about what we're doing. Uh, the demo, of course, I've shown you was actually using the same class, but with the RP2040 touch. Um, there's a lot more involved in that because you have to get around how the RP2040 port of LVGL is working against that device and it's kind of tough at times. So let's um, have a look at this uh, decode interrupt approach which is just echoing stuff actually onto the standard out. So the main application for this uh, really is not going to do a great deal it is basically just going to uh, start up, um, it's gonna flash an LED as well, because I always flash LEDs, um, and it's just gonna initialize our um, GPS module, basically, telling it which pins to use, what board rate is, and which UART device we're using. And that's pretty much it. Then it goes round and every, um, I think it's every second, it prints out how many satellites it's seeing, uh, on what the latitude and longitude and speed it's currently got from that GPS module. So everything else really is encapsulated in this GPS class. And uh, we're, it's a singleton, um, 
that we set up and we tell it where everything is and then it goes and does all its stuff on its own and then we can just pull back the latitude, longitude, speed and a number of satellites from it. So how does this all work? Well, it's, it's really very simple. Um, the setup of the, of the uh, unit really does all of the setup of uh, UART communication it's on, on the channel given. Uh, turns off hardware flows and sets this up so that we're actually going to get a uh, callback or um, from the interrupt every time we get data arriving on there. And that callback goes into this static function here. And I use the trick that I often use of going from statics to uh, member functions in order to get us into the object world so that we can then just read from that um, uh, UART and dro drop the data basically into a buffer until we get to the end of the line because this is a line based protocol that this stuff comes in at and when I get a line feed then I actually go and run this decode buffer routine and decode buffer then uh, decodes the, uh, the actual message and uh, adds the uh, it, when we're getting latitude, longitude and speed it adds that data in. Now I've still got a lot of the print code in here uh, all commented out uh, from what I've done in previous examples um, and I could use that for debugging when I needed to um, so that's quite useful to have. Um, there's also things like the time that I thought I might use but I haven't actually got round to so that's, that's basically what it's doing. So it's a very simple but very effective way of actually reading the data from this device, getting it into an, a, a nice class so that we can actually poll and get access to what is the location that this module is actually telling us about. I think this is the first video with a section away from my study. What do you think? Did it add some interest to this video? Perhaps I can drop some other locations into future videos. I have some great plans in place for some IoT projects using this GPS module. So keep subscribed and watching to see what I come up with. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, then why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video or the payment link in the description. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco. And I'd appreciate your help in getting me there. And of course, I'd love to meet you all there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.